Personality differences can be a hotbed for destructive conflict or a, create an environment that is rich in different viewpoints and ways of doing things and skills and strengths and all of that. And it's a matter of educating yourself around what those differences are. In this video, I am going to do an overview of personality styles and then I am going to share with you my go-to assessment that I always use when it comes to personalities and conflict. So here we go. I'm Karen Balencic and I am the founder and author of Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace. And I've been working with leaders and teams specifically in the area of conflict mastery. Yes, because that's where real performance and innovation happens for over three decades. I have experienced a lot of conflict and I use these tools on a regular basis. You know, I'd like to begin with just a few things about personality tests. For one, is many years ago, I used to resent having to take these tests because I didn't like to be put in a bucket or put other people in a bucket. And what I have learned since then, there is huge value in understanding personality. And it's really not about putting anyone in a bucket. It's about creating awareness around what makes us all tick and how do we adapt our behavior to be able to communicate better with other people. So I find it hugely valuable. A little historical background is many personality tests, including Myers-Briggs and DISC, come out of the same research, which was back from the 1920s by Martzen. He wrote a book that summarized his studies and research that was called Emotions of Normal People. What I like specifically about DISC is that it's a simple model that's easy for people to grasp in a very short period of time. And it's really more focused on behavior whereas Myers-Briggs gets more into psychology and preferences and that type of thing, and it's a, a more complex model. So I really love DISC. The particular DISC that I'm addressing in this video is Wiley's Everything DISC Productive Conflict, which is very specific to how different personalities respond in conflict. What I like about this particular assessment are three things. One is that Wiley's model has done a tremendous amount of research. The repeatability of their assessments is 94%. So once you take it, it doesn't change that much. Unless you have, as an adult, a traumatic experience, it may change. But it tends to stay the same, and it's mainly because of the way they do these tests. So if you answer some questions and there's some discrepancy in your answers, they continue to ask you more questions so that they get a really solid result. That's called adaptive testing. And I like this particular form because it focuses on what our priorities are when it comes to conflict. Okay, so first off, I wanna give you 30,000 foot view of the primary four personality styles. Now, mind you, there are 16 in all that are a combination of these. But the major four are first D. So DIS is an acronym. D is for dominance. The motivation for behavior for a dominant personality is usually around solving problems. Keep that in mind. So how do you recognize a D behavior? Well, they tend to be really strong-minded, willful, and really want to force things to happen. What is it they want when it comes to conflict? They want logic and victory. Then we move on to the I. I stands for influence. And the major motivator for type I's are people. You can recognize I's because they tend to be very enthusiastic, outgoing, people-oriented, and optimistic. In conflict, they focus on expression and feelings. Then we move on to the S style. S is steady. And steady people are motivated by pace. They like things to be even paced. You can recognize steady people because they tend to be even-tempered, patient, accommodating, and tactful. 
and, and actually I would put loyal in there as well. And then we go on to the final one, which is C, conscientiousness. The primary motivation for behavior of someone of the C style is around precision and procedure. How can you recognize someone that's a type C? They tend to be private, analytical, precise, and really they tend to follow the rules more. In conflict, type C wants to have justice and logic. So now what I'm gonna put up is the Wiley priority circle. And this is what happens. So you take the Wiley assessment, they will give you a report back and it'll show this circle. You will have a dot on that circle and it'll show you where you land amongst all of that. And I wanna reiterate, this will show, particularly if you're under stress, where your priorities will, will rest. But it doesn't mean that you can't have those other priorities. And I find for myself, like for example, I have very little conscientiousness, but I do a lot of detailed things. So it doesn't mean I can't, it just means my preference may be something else. So I look at a fully developed person as someone that can explore all these different things, and that really makes you an adaptable and a, a flexible person in a lot of different situations. But if you look around the circle, you can see the difference in priorities. So the D is going to be a combination of justification, control, and assertion. The I is going to be a combination of assertion, expression, and reassurance. Those are the priorities that you need when you have conflict. And then the S, the steady, is going to be needing reassurance, harmony, and stability. And then the C will also need stability, objectivity, and justification. So those are the needs, the priorities, those different styles have when they are in conflict. I'm gonna show you several videos to help illustrate. What I love about this assessment, it's not just an assessment that's gonna say, hey, here's your dot here. It's actually going to give you a lot more rich information because they talk about based upon our style, what are our automatic thoughts that we have in conflict? Really important thing to become aware of because when you recognize that I've got this thought, you can do something about that. And I'm gonna show you a few videos here that demonstrate these different styles. And I'm gonna share some of the automatic thoughts that these different styles have. So this first video, notice, the woman in this video is really demonstrating her behavior as D. And notice I say her behavior as D, because I don't want to say she's a D. Her behavior is D here. And some of the automatic thoughts that she might be thinking are, how dare you challenge me? Or if you push, I'm just going to push back harder. So that probably is familiar to you, whether you're that person or you've been on the other side with that person. And here are some other automatic thoughts that tend to be prevalent with D styles. I wanna revisit this video, but I want you to focus now on the, the man on the sofa. <laughs> he, to me, again, looks like his behavior is demonstrating what I would call would be an S style. Notice he's just sitting there. Typical automatic thoughts for an S style would be, it's awful when someone is mad at me. And might also be thinking, you just don't care about me. And then here are some other automatic thoughts that S's often have. Now let's look at I. I kind of skipped over I this time just because those two videos so fit nicely together. But the I, this woman here to me exemplified an I. She's enthusiastic, she's happy, she's optimistic. So when automatic thoughts for an I are often, it's awful when someone is mad at me. She might even be thinking, you don't care about me. And then here are some more automatic thoughts that I's have. And again, we tend to react out of those automatic thoughts. And then the C. These videos demonstrate the C. It's that intense focus, detail-oriented person. In conflict, an automatic thought for a C could be, you're trying to blame me. Or it could be, you're an idiot for not seeing it my way. I've got the data. And again, all these are just different personality styles. Here are some more automatic thoughts that C's have. What I love about 
this assessment, it's not just an assessment, it gives you advice. So it'll go through all these different behaviors that we tend to do when we have conflict. Here they are. And as you evaluate, and I often invite people to have someone else they know look at those behaviors and, and just check and see, do you do this? Do I do this? So that you can do a checking point. And then the report goes through great detail in terms of what prompts those behaviors. And then what I really love about it, it, it goes through and gives you suggestions of what to do. The other thing that I love about this assessment, and I use this a lot with people when I'm coaching them and with teams and perhaps one other person or two people that have a lot of conflict. What I love about it is it will give you a comparison chart. So you can run two assessments side by side and it'll give you a report of where the trouble spots are with this other person and it actually gives you suggestions. You can sit down and look at that side by side. It's incredibly helpful in terms of resolving conflict. So if this has been interesting to you and you'd like to dive into it further, please contact me or even better, I have this assessment as part of my membership site and my conflict mastery course. You can subscribe to that for a month or forever. Go to conflictmasterycourse.com to learn a little bit more about that. Thank you so much for hanging in here. I love your comments, your ideas, your suggestions. Thank you so very much.